So I'm sure you've all heard of the Stream Deck. The little gadget that sits on your desk with the little screens and buttons that you can configure and it's really popular with the likes of Twitch streamers etc. But I always had a little bit of a problem with the Stream Deck and it was the price. It was really expensive, £150, probably $180 just for the original one that very first came out. So in this video I'm not only going to make it a lot cheaper I'm talking a third of the price but I'm gonna make it better why is it gonna be better because it's gonna have RGB of course and it's gonna do way more stuff so I guess the first thing we do is have a look at the design of what I'm gonna be calling the Stream Deck Pro Plus or I don't know what the name of it should be but for now we'll just call it the Stream Deck Pro Plus. So let's have a look on Fusion 360 to see how I've designed it and then of course we'll look at the other components that you're going to need. So here's the final design that I came up with. As you can see it's in three sections. We have the base, we have the centre section and then the top section, the face section that holds the screen itself. So if we remove some of these and look at them individually, let's start off with the base. As you can see, six screw holes and I printed this in clear resin. You can also use clear PLA as well. And the top is in black. Of course, you could do that any color you like, but all the files are on Maker World. So as you can see, I've gone for a pretty basic design. All I wanted was have it close up to the keyboard and then angled towards you. And I just think that's, it does ha overhang the keyboard a little bit, but I wanted it to be sort of from a distance. It looks like it's part of the keyboard itself when really it's an add-on for any keyboard that you have because it's not actually connected to the keyboard. So first of all, let's have a look at all the components you're going to need to put one of these together. And of course, we'll then go over the sponsor of today's video which is JLC of course because they make PCBs and 3D print parts. Anyway let's go to the top down camera and have a look at everything you're going to need to make this work. So we looked at the design in Fusion 360 but let's have a look at what JLC have sent me because I got these resin printed. Now you can FDM print everything in this project but I just wanted it to look more sort of manufactured than homemade. So JLC package everything really well as you can see. And I have enough parts here to make two because a good friend of mine, Darkseid, He's seen this project come together and he really wanted one himself. So first up we have the resin clear transparent parts and they're going to let that RGB goodness through. So these look amazing. Of course you can have them polished. You, you can do all sorts of stuff with this resin but I just wanted it to be frosted a little bit. Here is one of the face plates. As you can see, you're not going to see any layer lines with resin printing. It looks amazing. And if we open this last package, because we're only opening one of these at the moment, this is the main section here. Now we do have two little sort of half circle cutouts on the back and that is just so we can have the wires coming through. Now jumping on Amazon to show you the other things you're going to need of course we'll need this 8.8 .8 inch touch screen which has a resolution of 1920 by 480 so it's a really good resolution it's got a HDMI input and then a Type-C port now that Type-C port has to go to the PC because not only does it power the screen it also needs to deal with all the touch screen functions so that's the screen that we went with now because that HDMI and USB-C port is on the side and I didn't want the bezels to be too big we're going to need this 360 degree HDMI HDMI adapter so we can basically bring that HDMI port in turn it around so it brings it back on itself so it's a lot easier to connect things up because if you don't have this then it's just not gonna fit the same with the USB-C port we're gonna need one of these adapters which basically takes that USB-C port and points it straight downwards or upwards whichever way you're looking at it again this is a must so I just didn't want to have ridiculously big bezels on it this is the best way that I could 
sort of get around that. Now, of course, you can use a USB-C cable that does have a right angle on the end and then just use that cable instead. I know these are out of stock at the moment, but I'll find some other links when it comes to putting the links in the description below. So next, if you go in for the RGB, again, you're going to need those LEDs. These are ultra narrow and they are a little bit more expensive, but you don't need to use these ones. The only reason I got these ones is because of the PS2 Classic uh, project where we light up the PS2 logo and I have used them again for another video that's coming up the switch to dock so you can just grab any sort of LED light strip as long as they're addressable now of course we need something to power that RGB and of course we're going to be using these custom made ESP 32s that I ordered from JLC PCB they are actually perfect for WLED and any sort of LED RGB project I've got a dedicated video on them go click in the top right hand corner to check that out and once you take those pick and place extra parts off this is what you're left with and that brings us on to the sponsor of this video JLC PCB. JLC will bring your ideas to life in their state-of-the-art facility. They have experts on hand that goes over your files to make sure there's no issues. They're fast reliable and very competitive on pricing it's super easy to order online so let's go ahead now and order some pcbs it's a simple case of dragging and dropping the gerber files across and then you can see the pcb itself it gives you the dimensions how many layers it's got then you can select the quantity how many pcbs you'd like we'll go for 10 then you've got lots of different options. 1.6 millimeters is the standard, but you can change this to say one millimeter if you want a thinner board. Maybe you've got some space constraints. You can have it any color you like, blue, green, white. White's my favorite. It's either white or black. They just look really nice. Let's change it to five. And as you can see, it's only $2.10. Now, of course, they do have lots of coupons, so make sure you check out the coupons to see how much money you can save. So for more information and the latest offers, check out the link in the description below. So thanks again to JLC for sponsoring this video and all the other videos. Your help is really greatly appreciated. So next, we need to put this together. So again, back to the top down camera and of course we will speed up through the footage if you do want more details or you have questions or need help have a look in the description below look for the discord server and that is basically a discord about all the 3d printed parts all the projects and you can ask all your questions in there so anyway let's go to the top down camera and get this thing put together so i'm just going to give you sort of key points of what we're doing so we've got that 8.8 .8 inch touch screen and i'm taking the screws out of it to open it up because i'm going to steal five volts for the esp32 so i can power it now i've put a hole in the back and then i'm just sort of sanding it and smoothing it making sure that's all good we get the multimeter out and this is me hunting for that five volts as soon as we've found the five volts we can prepare two wires and then solder those to the main board of the screen itself you can run a separate USB-C cable if you wish, but I just wanted there to be just two cables. So I'm just testing to make sure I've still got those five volts on those wires, and then it's time to put it all back together. Now I've put the screws back in. We've got the ESP32. We're gonna tape it to the back with some double-sided sticky tape. We'll trim the wires down. We'll basically solder that in. We've got the ground, we've got the five volts. Amazing, now we're gonna cut down some of those led light strips and we're going to tin the three points we're basically going to have a ground five volts and data so this is me just putting those three cables on to the first strip and then soldering it to the esp32 itself we plug it in we test it it's working so then we're going to put a second strip in there so again we need to solder three wires and just make sure the arrows on the led light strips are going the right way sort of the flow of data way so we're going to clean it all off with some ipa 
and there we can see they're working and I'm just using my phone messing about with the actual LEDs they never showed up at first but that was completely my fault but as you can see they're showing up now and we can change all the colors etc so we're going to glue these strips down it's probably not the best way to do it but I'm just going to super glue them down. I'm using Gorilla Super Glue and then I'm using an activator, which basically makes the super glue go off and go hard a lot quicker. I'm sure there's going to be some that's what she said jokes in the comments. So feel free to drop them down there. So we're gluing the shell together. I might look at this a little bit later and maybe change the design of how it goes together because I'm not really a fan of when things just glue together. But anyway, now it's just a case of getting everything together because we're, we're going to be making two of these things. So this is just another one that I've got. As you can see, we've got that HDMI and USB-C sort of adapter pieces. Basically put the wires in. These are different style USB strips these are ones that actual JLC PCB made and then that's going to go on the bottom and I did have a little bit of trouble with this one so I was messing about with this for a bit but once the bottom is on that's pretty much it done now there's no software that this runs on but there is one thing I want to show you so let's move on over to the PC so I can show you how to set up a virtual stream deck so as you can see here, I have two virtual stream decks. We have one for Helldivers, which goes over sort of putting all the stratagems out there. And then we have another one with all my apps. So it's really easy to create these. Click add virtual device. And as you can see, it gives you a little six button device here and then we can select these squares and then we can get it to do all different sorts of things. So if you wanted it to play audio, you drag the soundboard clip across and then select the file, select the output device, etc., etc. But if you wanted it to open an application, so there we go, system and open application, use a drop down menu, it'll show you everything that's installed or you can find the exe file yourself. You can move these around and of course let's drag this down to the actual device itself there we go that is the stream of that screen and if we drag it down there we go it's a little bit smaller but we can adjust everything we've got full customization here so let's play about with some of the settings now the two virtual stream decks i've got at the moment you can lock them in place so if we unlock this one as you can see we can move it around right click and then we can lock it again so you've got granular sort of positioning options here we can put it perfectly in the place that you want it and then lock it we can do the same with the little one that we just created there is a button so you can hide and unhide it but let's dive into the settings because we want to make some changes here we can set how big we want it so let's just go for the biggest we can move it across so you could have like two really important buttons here in the center, having them large. Now that border around the side, we can also change the color of that. So you can have something bold that really stands out. Or like me, I went for a black background. So if I had a black border, you just wouldn't see it at all. This looks really cool. We could have these at the bottom and lock it in place. It's super easy to use this software. If you do have any problems, join the Discord. Link is in the description. So as you can see, that was pretty easy. Now, of course, you don't have to do soldering if you don't want to. What you can do is have a third wire going to power that ESP32 for the RGB. Now, of course, if you don't want any RGB whatsoever, that's fine. Just print that bottom section the same color as the rest of it you don't need any sp32 of course you don't need to put a hole in the back of the casing happy days you can just go ahead without it so again another cool project and we do have some really cool ones coming up soon so get subscribed so you don't miss them so it's that time again let's have a look at the final results now if you did go for the rgb it looks amazing and this one only 
has one strip with 12 LEDs. As you can see, the rubber feet hold it nice and securely in place. So obviously we had a look at the virtual stream deck and as you can see here, we've got the Hell Divers and then on the right hand side, all the applications. So the Hell Divers one is really cool. So what you do is you just tap the stratagem or the function that you want to do. Now, if you want to put a turret down, you hit turret. It gives you an option of all the different turrets that, that you may have in your inventory. Same with all the other functions. Opening applications, again, is just a touch of a button. Well, it's not really a button. It's just a touch of the touch screen. So if we open Etcher, we can see it goes green and the application opens. Now, of course, you can watch YouTube videos on here. This is an ultra wide 4K YouTube video and it looks stunning on this little screen. So one of the cool things that I've been using it for is I like Bring Me The Horizon and Apple Music. And as you can see, I've got all the words coming up on the screen. It's really good as a companion for a music player, whether it's Apple Music, Spotify or any other application that you can play music on on your PC. It works really well. So this has been another fun project and I thank you guys if you've made it to the end of this video. As always, there's links in the description below so you can buy everything you need to make this and you can grab the STL files from Maker World. Again, a link is in the description. And of course, join the Discord if you want to show off any of the projects that you've designed or you want to post pictures of any of the projects I've made just to show me your appreciation and that you've actually made something that I've put out there yourself. So that wraps it up for another video. But if you enjoy my content, don't forget to like, subscribe and then hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. I really appreciate everyone that's made it to the end of the video. I'm JP and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.